ನಮಸ್ತೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಓಲ್ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಶ್ರೀಮಲಾ ದೀದಿ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಕೋಯಿಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅಸ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ದ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಯೇ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸುನೀಲ್ ಜಿ ಸಭಿಕೋ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಗುಡ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಸುನೀಲ್ ಜಿ ಜಿ ದೀದಿ ಸೋ ದೀದಿ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಶೇರಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಟುಡೇ ಇನ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಬೈ ರೂಪಾಲಿನ್ ಪತ್ಕಿರಿ ದೀದಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಅನದರ್ ಬೈ ಚಂದನ್ ಪಂಡಿತ್ ಭಯ್ಯ ಸೋ ವಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ರೂಪಾಲಿನ್ ದೀದಿ ರೂಪಾಲಿನ್ ದೀದಿ uh is a teacher uh of english at st joseph's convent school raurkela odisha and she attended her uhp intro pre fdp in september 2021 and uhp 2 in june 2022 uh it was uh, the uhp 2 was an offline program in shikshao and sanjan university bhuvaneshwar and she started at- attending the morning sessions from december 2021 she has been volunteering for this faq in fdps and uh, sdps whenever she get time so uh, uh, she also takes some other role in sunday uh, and saturday weekly meetings in the eastern region meetings and ppa calling is also part of her volunteering activities she is also regional coordinator in the eastern region and she is trying to contact institutions in assam and other northeastern states and some other uh, states some other institutions in odisha also she is also in the school book preparation team and translation team so with this i welcome ripal didi for her sharing didi please uh, continue your sharing to 20 minutes on the basis of these indicators over to you thank you and uh, good morning uh, sunil bhaiya good morning shamila didi and all my co-explorers. Namaste. Uh, Sunil Bhaiya has already given my introduction. I will just add to it a little bit of my family. My husband, Devajit Trabha, is an engineer serving at the Rorkela Unit of Steel Authority of India Limited. Our two daughters, Haiku and Hia, are of 26 and 22. We belong to Assam, but for the last three decades, we are in Orissa. The two years of my internal journey following the UHV way has been so unique that it would be very difficult to sum it up step by step in only 20 minutes. Uh, Though I plan to attempt that, I would like to state in the very beginning the few major realizations which have helped me immensely in my personal transformation. I would exemplify uh, the others uh, later, uh, if time permits. First, happiness is my innate nature. This I started exploring from uh, the statement, happiness is harmony, not statement from uh, the proposal that happiness is harmony. It's a feeling of being resolved. It is a state where I wish to continue, a state without any conflict. The more I can observe, the better I see the reality. The more I understand and accept the reality as it is, the less mistakes I make. Fewer the mistakes, the better is my emotional state. For this, uh, the tool natural acceptance helps me a lot. Uh, Now, the phrases natural acceptance and right feeling, I try to understand this way. Uh, I don't know uh, whether I'm right or wrong. I noticed that I don't feel comfortable with feelings of opposition like fear, anger, anxiety, uh, sorrow inside me. Whereas the feeling of relationship like uh, relationship always feels good. Any kind of strong negative feeling also impacts my physical health with uh, frequent headache or uh, headache, migraine, or stomach upset. No external excitements like uh, promotion at the job, salary hike, movie, shopping, good food can give me permanent happiness. More and more experiential validation in everyday life has helped me see with some clarity that happiness is my innate nature and not the effect from outside. 
Having said that, I would admit that I still look for companionship of my husband and doctors. If they remain too busy with their own lives, ignoring communication and participation, I feel uneasy. Perhaps this is my deep-rooted conditioning that a family must remain connected, if not physically, at least with feelings. Perhaps this expectation is not wrong, but I must not be affected if they fail to do so at times. This is a new realization. The proposals, trust in intention and right evaluation of competence have helped me to maintain my harmony, ensuring right feeling insight towards my daughters, my spouse, uh, uh, my students and colleagues uh, has helped me considerably to maintain definite behavior outside. Earlier, I used to swing between positive and negative behavior depending on their actions. This in turn, uh, that my new realization, this in turn has brought in a considerable amount of ease and comfort to my family. Slowly, the rewards are visible in their growing positivity and that motivates me further to stay focused on the right feeling. From a feeling of dissatisfaction, self-pity and miserable victimhood, gradually I have started feeling empowered and light. I can choose my feeling most of the times, which I never thought that it would be possible that one can choose one feeling. I never thought so. I have been able to identify certain deep-rooted sanskars in myself, which have, the, have been the bane of my life earlier. For example, the habit of complaining when expectations are not met. For example, I used to complain against my daughters if they eat too much of packaged food at the wrong hours and don't follow the circadian reading because I am a very early riser and I am uh, I believe in self-regulation. But I can see now how feeling of, of how feeling upset or angry is not naturally acceptable and creates family disharmony too. Advice giving never works. So I try to express my concern now with offerings of healthy, nutritious snacks like fruit salad or sprout uh, chat without any tagline of health, health benefits. After eating these, they are not left with much appetite for junk food. So <clears throat> gradually the habit is going away uh, without enforced uh, advice. Another of my sanskars is that I used to try a lot to establish my points with facts and logic. I now realize that however right my reasoning is, if I am not acceptable by the other or if my way of presenting is not in sync with the, recept uh, with the other's receptivity, my rationality is of no value. So there is no better way but to ensure the right feeling in me so that I can remain in harmony and work on the right understanding of both myself and the other. I remember asking Kumar Bhaiya once if uh, the right understanding is absolute. I think I have got some glimpse of it now uh, with the three words, very simple words, but very, very deep. That is relationship, harmony, and coexistence. I know I have to go a long way, but I'm still trying to understand that. Another of my very deep-rooted conditioning uh, and that surprises me that I could catch it, is the feeling of gratitude. It is a good song, sanskar, no doubt, but only after joining UHV, I have realized that sometimes <clears throat> we start thinking quite highly of ourselves and start expecting the same behavior from the other. <clears throat> 
perhaps at the root of this uh, sanskar of gratitude in me um, is that I have been raised by my sister and brother-in-law uh, as I lost my mother before the age of four. I was well raised by them. So uh, I'm extremely grateful towards them. From childhood, I keep telling others that they're so good. They have done this for me. Now, that feeling of gratitude has become a sanskar in me, in a way, maybe. I do not know how others feel it. That would have been a good thing had I not been affected by lack of the feeling of gratitude in some other people. It's not that always that they are not grateful to me. I am upset, not only because of that. If they are not grateful to others also, whom they should have been, I, I am upset. Now I see that I have to work uh, on myself on this part of being affected. Regarding my program to ensure happiness in myself, I can say that sensation has never played a very big role in my life earlier also. <clears throat> of course, I have a sweet tooth and I like traditional handloom clothes or art uh, artifacts. I, con um, I consume or buy them uh, now, uh, but within limits. I'm, uh, and I can see, I'm trying to check um, that uh, I'm, I see that I'm not dependent on them for my happiness. Uh, I just like them, but I can also uh, cut down on it. Physical pain has never part of me much. Um, I, I take the right measures. Uh, either I try to endure, or I, uh, if it is extreme, then I go for some kind of uh, treatment when I see that it's a symptom of some disease. But my difficult area is that, uh, that, that I still get affected by others' so-called unfavorable words. I have to work on the adverse effect of the so-called unfavorable words I say, so-called because I give the meaning and then uh, out of habit, old habits die hard, I get affected at times. The frequency and intensity of the impact has considerably decreased, but I can't say that it has stopped altogether. So basically it is my preconditionings, which I have been, uh, I will have to work on so that someday my expectations, thoughts and desire will get aligned effortlessly with my natural acceptance. My second major takeaway uh, in UHV is that uh, living in the moment instead of dwelling in the past and future, reduces a lot of guilt, regrets, apprehension, and anxiety. On many occasions, I felt better by drawing my attention uh, quickly to the current moment. Third, the wrong or undesirable thoughts and actions cannot be simply removed from the imagination unless we are able to uh, replace it with the right. Uh, this I have done, uh, experimented with uh, the behavior of my daughters uh, and already one example regarding food also, I have stated that the wrong has to be replaced with the right. Just mere do's and don'ts won't do. Uh, the fourth realization, if we can sharpen our observation and follow our, ex uh, follow our expectations, thoughts and desire, with a why pray uh, by asking who I many times and, and going deeper and deeper, we reach our basic desire at the level of feeling. From there, things look simpler and life seems easier. Um, I have a very uh, good example, like strong example uh, where I'm uh, working on with my elder daughter, but uh, that would take some time. I will. I might come back to that if time permits. Um, uh, now I want to go to exercise one, uh, that is observing the self by the self. If I talk about steps one, two, and three, uh, the first one is definitely that I um, became aware of myself. 
my imagination. I can say that I with I with the passage of time I am able to observe my imagination more often, though not every moment. I am able to see clearly which feeling is comfortable, naturally acceptable to me, and when I am in discomfort. That doesn't mean that I have become capable of ensuring the right feeling all the time. Uh, for example, recently I was disturbed for a few moments when another colleague of mine uh, called for certain girls, girls from my class uh, to give practice for school assembly uh, while my class was going on. I was teaching at that time. I could see my feeling of opposition towards her. Here I can refer to steps four and five, who decided the feeling and on what basis. I could see it was I who chose the feeling of irritation. I allowed myself to be negatively impacted by the interruption in my teaching and also by the other teacher's lack of consideration. As I knew very well that this uh, purpose for which he, she called the girls had no urgency. As a class, class teacher of another class, I also prepare girls for assembly but never disturb any other class. I guide them during the recess. My disturbing feeling was based on two assumptions. Uh, this I could uh, analyze later on. One, uh, there shouldn't be any interruption during my teaching. Two, the other teacher should have been should have behaved exactly the way I do. But within no time at that at that uh, moment, I could see. I mean, during teaching only, I could see that I would waste more time in holding on to the past moment because the girls have already left. I should not hold on to that moment and that feeling uh, which was not uh, and I should not hold on to the not naturally acceptable feeling. So I chose not to continue with that feeling but to finish my lesson and um, decided to talk to her later about it. During the break, I conveyed to her my views with a feeling of relationship. Later on, I also helped her in her class assembly by teaching the children something. Uh, where they needed guidance. This is made both of us happy. In fact, she said that this is real sportsmanship. Maybe she may, meant that I did not hold on to that uh, feeling of opposition. With this simple example at workplace, I can say that I'm moving towards steps six and seven. I have been facing many more difficult challenges at the family level, but Experiential validation of the proposal and motivation received from the resolution and mutual happiness has been encouraging me to sharpen my observation and deepen my exploration. Uh, anxiety about my daughter's career and marriage is one major issue at the family level. But thankfully, because of the UHP proposals, instead of feeling prey to overthinking, I'm trying to check what my uh, expectations from her are and what I'm thinking about them, that is expectation thoughts, and then where we are in conflict. But instead of going to actual verbal conflict, I am delving deeper into my desire, which is her well-being and happiness. I realized that if I wish to fulfill my basic desire, desire, that is her happiness, which will also ultimately will make me happy, then I have to assure her of my concern for her instead of posing to her as a rival. Due to my extra strictness in her childhood, uh, she has a lot of emotional baggage. As long as I'm not accepted by her, she will not value any of my advice or suggestions. I understand that it is my responsibility to ensure consistent right feeling and definite behavior towards her to be acceptable by her. Justifying with multiple arguments is of no use. Rather, I will cripple her more and more and the right understanding needed to take right decisions for her future on both sides will not be developed. So right now I'm focusing on right evaluation of both of us and uh, looking for creative ways 
to reach out to her and it is gradually showing results. I'm convinced that when I will be able to understand the feelings of relationship, harmony and coexistence in its completeness, I will be able to maintain my harmony all the time without any pendulum effects. Along with the, um, at the self, family and societal level, I'm also trying to observe and explore uh, our relatedness and coexistence with nature and existence. With nature, I find it easy, but existence, um, I'm still working on. Uh, access to observing the self, the body, and the interaction between the self and the body in space by the self. Step one, one and two, I am there. So I know I exist, uh, I exist, uh, I can't say no, I'm working on it. I'm there, I exist, the body is there, the body exists. It is I uh, who decides uh, what instructions to give to the body, which sensations to read from the body. I had a vague idea from before UHV that I am not just the body. I used to think about a lot about which is intangible and that is at the conscious level, but definitely I had no clarity. Like it was kind of complex, messy network, which I used to roam about. But never before did I try to verify the subtle transactions that keep taking place between uh, my self and the body. Following steps three and four, now I am in the process of checking on the inputs of my five sense organs uh, and how often do I actually read them or ignore them um, or how, may, uh, how I may uh, give various meanings to the same sensation at different times, different situations. For example, the school bell uh, after every period. If I'm engrossed in teaching, I can't hear it sometimes. Um, but if I'm uh, given a proxy class and I have nothing to do, uh, I feel bored, then immediately I can hear it. If, even if the distance from the uh, office, from where the bell rings to the classroom is same, uh, the periods are of the same length uh, duration, but my um, reception is different, my giving of meaning is different. Um, that means I choose not to read the sensation of sound sometimes, uh, which was actually which has actually reached my ears, as I have uh, given priority to my teaching. Um, that time I don't hear. Many times, while holding a hot pan in the kitchen without awareness, I um, I may get burnt, but I choose to ignore a minor burn so that I don't drop the pan and waste the food, the cooked food, which is there in the pan. That means the self is instructing the body, uh, the hand that hold on, don't uh, like, uh, I do not, uh, there is no reflex action here that I, I feel uh, the burn sensation and I drop, I don't do, because I feel that the food should not be wasted. That means I am working there, uh, not my hand <clears throat> or the sensation. And the same happens. Of course, the, if the burn is severe, then myself decides to give more attention to that, go and put some ice or put some burn oil or something. So I decide what to do at that moment, what kind of meanings should be given to that uh, sensation of uh, touch. <clears throat> The same happens with taste, smell, or sight too. Sometimes I can't see the knife, uh, which may be lying right in front of my eyes, perhaps because I give priority to some other thought in my imagination. These day-to-day -day observations tell me that I am not the sensation. There is a difference between myself and body. It is I who decides whether to read, not read, or what meaning to give to the received uh, or read sensation. Step five, 
I see that my reaction or response to the sensations coming from outside is dependent on my sanskar uh, or some assumption. Earlier, I used to react with equal force to my younger daughters, for example, uh, younger daughters angry outburst during her adolescence. And that was almost the time of uh, pandemic where we were uh, mostly inside. That was a very difficult time for the youngsters. Um, and that led, that my reaction, counter reaction led to big fights, uh, used to lead to big fights at times. That was because of my assumptions that it is bad behavior, not right towards an elder, elder uh, like mother, and embarrassing as neighbors could hear at times. So as a mother, uh, I used to think it is my duty or it is my privilege that I must assert myself. With her behavior only one fine day, it, as an epiphany, it struck me what I had been hearing in UHV, that uh, natural acceptance that do I like that feeling? So in her behavior only, I remember, clearly remember that evening when uh, I we, we chose. We have a drop. time constraint. So please uh, quickly finish, Didi. Yes. Uh, how many minutes left? Yeah, now the next sharing has to begin by uh, 6 o'clock. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. But from uh, the time, my attention was drawn to the fact that these outbursts could be the reflection of her own disturbance. I have started dealing with such situations with compassion and understanding. It has mallowed her to a great extent in these two years. Coming to my commitments, I would try to give at least two hours every day uh, for trans uh, translation, transcription, content creation for school books, expansion of UHV activities in the Eastern region. I'm also interested in content sharing and I know uh, for that, I will have to put extra hours for serious preparation and demo presentation. For my self-development, I will continue giving the two hours of the morning session and observing myself every moment throughout the uh, whole day, throughout, the, uh, throughout my waking hours. With a feeling of heartfelt gratitude to the whole UHV family, here I conclude my sharing after the eighth batch of the morning session. Thank you so much. Chief. Thank, thank you, Didi, for the exemplified sharing. I request Shambla Didi to give her comments regarding your share. Shambla Didi, how are you? Namaste. Namaste, Rupalim ji. Very nice to hear your sharing. Namaste, dear. Namaste. Thank you, Didi. And all your um, little... Um, Initially, you were a little um, apprehensive about being able to share um, all the changes that you have been able to see in such a short time. But I must congratulate you that I think you did a wonderful job of um, expressing what, you know, the journey that you have gone through in a very crisp and in an honest and sincere manner. And I can also see the changes from your past sharings and now how, um, you know, you have matured in your outlook, in your perceiving of others, how you have been able to see your conditionings. And this is the whole purpose. This, what I can see in you, the comfort, the level of comfort that you have reached compared to what it was earlier. So it's a very, um, you know, very gratifying to see that um, this small effort that is being done in the morning sessions can make this much difference in a um, person's life. Of course, the journey is long, like you have mentioned, it may take some time, but um, this much progress, I think, um, it is obvious from your sharing that uh, you know you're proceeding in the right direction and you're able to see your role in a much better manner your participation and that is giving you so much comfort within so all the very best in your future journey also 
and uh, your participation is also greatly valued in the uh, UHV team. So all the best, Rupalanji. Thank you so much, Didi. Thank you.